This is a short demonstration and lesson on playing the Tibetan uh, sacred ritual symbols, uh, known as Oromo collectively. Individually, uh, these flat symbols are known as the Silnian, and the bigger bell symbols are known as the Romo, but together they're known as Romo. Now, to play the Silnian, you need to hold them in a relaxed manner. So what I do is use like a pretending toy gun as uh, the way to hold your hand so that the symbols are resting on your hand like that. They're just resting on that. And these fingers are keeping the symbol from falling over. You're not grabbing the symbols like this. You get a terrible sound. Um, the idea behind these and any musical instrument from any culture or any family of instruments is to get to be able to get the instrument ringing. And so by holding them in a relaxed manner, you will be able to get the instrument to ring. Now the Cillian start from a vertical position and then you slide the right hand or it could be the left it's not universal but you slide I always slide the right hand forward and so you get this crescent moon and you generate the sound of the symbols in two ways one is by tipping just the top And the other way is by flicking your wrists so that the, the bottom throws the top into itself, like this. Now another motion which I need to demonstrate even without the symbols is that I'm holding the, the symbols this way and what you're doing is rotating the wrists and then slowly closing them to get the faster frequency, as if you were dropping a coin on the floor, it'll start and then get faster and faster. So you're rotating the wrist like this. Oh, it's like. where they become horizontal. But the basic motion is vertical with a slight tilt. So there's basically three motions. There's this. bottom part and you're flicking your wrist you're flicking them you're flicking them like this so that you can get the, the bottom to have the top bang into it and then there's a slow closing motion but it's very relaxed if you squeeze too hard you're going to dampen the sound I'll demonstrate again So that's a uh, very simple explanation of playing the Silnian. Now the Romo, it's the same principle. Uh, it starts off slightly different. First of all, with the Romo, there's actually a male and female symbol. The male having the lower frequency, female having the higher. So I have to see which one is which here. This sound is higher. This is lower. So the male symbol goes on the bottom because the lower frequency wants to go up. 
and the female symbol is on higher because the higher frequency is already high and wants to come down and so the sound is generally going in those directions. So the Romo symbols start in a horizontal position as opposed to the Sillian which started in a vertical position. And you can give a slight tilt so that your wrist, you're holding it like a ball or a basketball or in your hand just naturally your arm is relaxed to the side. Maybe putting the, the rope between uh, your ring and the middle finger. And then this symbol goes on top. And then you have to, and I'm going to take it out of uh, position to show you that you open and get a crescent space uh, showing the bell uh, opening. So when I'm like this, I actually have that space like that. And so the plane of the symbols is like the rings of Saturn. They're in the same ring, um, in the same plane. And so there's a, this symbol is held by the, uh, the rope and your palm is controlling it to a degree but it, you're not grabbing it again so that the instrument rings otherwise you'll you get this sound and it's not what we're looking for we're getting the instrument to ring so if this is looser but still controlled with the palm you can see that holding it here but I do have some control over it this one I'm holding solid so I'd get this sound. And you see by holding this loosely, I can get that to ring for a very long time. So again, the like the Sillian, the sound is uh, generated in two ways. One is just the tipping sound. this come down like this and there's a slight again the wrist is actually acting naturally I mean just as if you were to open a doorknob or turn a key the, the wrist is just slightly moving on its own axis I'm not moving the symbols around or doing anything out of um, out of natural motion so it's and then I can come and do the same thing I have the flicking of the wrist with the Sillian symbols but this is I'm coming at a slight angle where the plane of the symbols is slightly un uh, unaligned so that the bottom gets tossed into the top. So I'll get. See, that initial sound is quite dramatic and quite loud because it's getting the bottom to crash in, but then I'm relaxing and just letting the symbol vibrate on top of the bottom one. And then to get that final uh, fast um, closing, what they call a bep, where, the, where the, the sound is going boom, 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 where it's going faster and faster and faster, I finish by rocking a little bit the bottom symbol uh, and then just let it sizzle out by itself at the very end. So that is how to get the sound and generate the sound properly out of the Sillian and the Romo. As for the actual musical parts, it depends on what puja or practice one is doing. Um, the Sillian are used in almost all of the pujas that I'm aware of. Uh, Green Tara, Medicine Buddha, Mankala, White Tara. The Romo symbols are more associated with the wrathful deities and uh, so are not used in Green Tara, White Tara, Medicine Buddha, but are used in uh, Mahakala, the Mahakala Pujas, for instance, Karmapakshi, things of that nature. So the actual music itself uh, is uh, dictated by the 
by the puja. 